Hey guys, this is Andre, and thanks again for joining me. Um, I've got a real short video here, which is called the Rapture Red Zone. Wake up and prepare. This is only a very brief video, uh, and it's basically meant to just be an update uh, to things happening right now. So let me quickly, briefly, uh, just give you the topics that I'd like to talk to you about. The first one is I want to make an observation concerning Elenin, the sign in Egypt, and the Three Days of Darkness. And I want to briefly talk about the increasing birth pains preceding the rapture event we've been experiencing uh, since the beginning of this year. Uh, in the third topic there is called the delay and Yeshua's literal fulfillment of Matthew 25 and then uh, the fourth chapter of this video series is called Revelation 12 and the birth of the morning star as well as how to get saved now and some tribulation no-nos. So let's get straight into this. Um, the first video again is called Observation, Elements, Sign in Egypt and the Three Days of Darkness. Now. The past few days has been very interesting and I'm sure you all agree tensions were running high with expectancy. And that's exactly what God wants from us, you know, his bride. We must live with expectant hearts daily. Second Peter 3.12 says, As you look forward to the day of God and eagerly wait for it to come. So we ought to look forward to it. I want to take this opportunity to address some of the questions I've been getting concerning Ellen and, and the sign in Egypt as well as uh, the three days of darkness. Now, first of all, I assume everybody's familiar with the term hypothesis and when I say this I say this on behalf of all watchers we do what God has instructed and inspired us to do to watch and to warn and we do this for your benefit now when we including myself were making the hypothesis that earth might be covered in darkness for three days we were giving you information that had the potential uh, as was observed by astronomers and we simply report their observations and look for public connections to ascertain the uh, you know the imminence of the time there Apart from scripture, you know, which which is not an hypothesis, this is, you know, the truth. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3 verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, uh, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So scripture, you know, is infallible. This is the word of God and this is not an hypothesis. You know, what we believe and what we say and certain things that we, uh, you know, interject in our observations, that, that those things might be faulted, those things might be an hypothesis, but not scripture. Now, any connections that may or may not exist in our findings or hypothesis can only be viewed as an inference to the facts stated by Scripture. Sometimes we may be right and other times we may be wrong. And it's then when the mockers and the scoffers have a field day, so to speak. You know, the funny thing is these guys are always back to check our updates. So, um, you know, for the mockers and the scoffers out there, I've got a new update for you guys. Stay tuned. Second Peter 3, 3 says, Knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant. So the Bible is saying here that scoffers and mockers are willingly ignorant. And this is a very dangerous thing to do uh, if you choose to be ignorant and ignore God's word. So Mr. Mocker and Mrs. Scoffer, there you have it. Your jobs in these last days are to mock and to scoff. And if you did not do that, my goodness, we wouldn't have known we're in the last days. Proverbs 16 verse 4 says, The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. So the mockers and the scoffers were made for this time and for this day so that we can know that we are indeed in the last days. They are, I would suppose, one of the signs of the last days. But let me continue on and talk to the real people who's eagerly waiting uh, for our Lord's return. And let me encourage you to be ready because that's the real reason I make these videos. Now concerning Ellen and I think we can all agree that it is a sign in the heavens placed there by God to warn his people to get ready. Genesis 1.14 talks about God putting the stars, moon and the sun in the heavens as signs to signal his appearing. And Luke 21 verse 28 says we ought to look up for our redemption draws nigh. Now what do we see when we look up? Well, the heavens. So he's giving an indication that we ought to look for something in the heavens that will signal he's appearing. Right now you've got record solar activity, a record number of near-Earth asteroids passing Earth, and you have this strange object called Comet Ellen and passing right by on the Feast of Trumpets. You also have the sign of Revelation 12 appearing exactly on the first day of the Feast of Trumpets this year. In fact, it is blatantly obvious God is literally screaming the signs at us. Ellen is no doubt under intelligent control and I believe it has been placed in that orbit by God for our benefit. Let me break it down for the scoffers. Ellen is a sign that Yeshua is about to appear. 
Now, Dr. Hoagland, if you wanted to know why this object has been placed in this very carefully designed orbit, well, there you have it. It's been placed there so God's children can prepare and get ready. This thing is a sign to God's children and it is coming right on a specific festival which we know to be the Feast of Trumpets and it is to alert God's children that this is the season. You know, the Bible says Jesus commanded, uh, you know, his people to, he said to them, how is it that you know the, you know, the, the seasons of, you know, the, the, you know, the natural seasons, the rain, you know, the, the summer, but you don't understand the seasons of God's time how is it that you can't tell you know God's timetable since you know all these things so th these things are pointing and is signs towards God's timetable so that God's children can prepare and get ready the pyramid of Giza in the sign in Egypt has been placed there as a sign and as we've discussed uh, in that video it is a duplicate of what would come and is currently in orbit close to earth now this tetrahedron shaped object currently in space looks like a pyramid it may not have the exact four sided dimensions but it looks like it and that's what I believe the connection is with Helen and the message in Isaiah 19 talking about how, uh, you know, the oppressed would be delivered uh, and it's using the pyramid shape as a sign pointing to this time and possibly to this object pointing in space. It's basically have, giving us a reference point. Say, look, when this thing appears that looks like a pyramid, this would be the time when your redemption draws nigh. You know, as far as the three days of darkness is concerned, the fact that it will happen is certain. And it's entirely biblical when you study the book of Joel and, and some other passages in the Bible. Uh, but as, as it became evident, this w was definitely not the time. Then again, scripture says, But ye, brethren, is not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief in the night. First Thessalonians 5. Now this could also mean we won't be here when darkness falls on the earth. Now this could also mean this event could take place immediately or shortly after the rapture of the church. Remember, Elenon will be at its, at its closest approach to earth on or around October the 17th. Uh, you know, so this event could still unfold at a later date. In this section, I want to very briefly talk to you about the increasing birth pains preceding the rapture event. Now, I'm a little short on experience here, but my wife tells me, you know, things get real tough just before the baby is born. I want to ask you this. Is it coincidence that on February the 22nd earlier this year, we had a sign in the earth in the form of an earthquake hitting a town called Christchurch, New Zealand, and five days later, we see yet another coincidence on February 27th as a massive 8.8 .8 earthquake uh, struck the city of Conception in Chile. So right at the start of this year, God was announcing the conception of Christ. Fast forward to September the 29th, we see a very rare sign appear in the heavens that perfectly matched that of Revelation 12. Revelation 12, 1 says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Revelation 12, 2 says, And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. So this woman is carrying full term. She's about to deliver this baby. Now, since the start of this year, we had numerous earthquakes, record number of floods, tsunamis, volcanic activity, and recently typhoons, and the list goes on. Now, this in concert with Palestine, uh, you know, about to be declared a state, the blatant hatred for God's people, the Jews, with certain on the horizon, the imminent collapse of the global economy ushering in a new monetary system controlled digitally, which we know is the mark of the beast of Revelation 13, and many more indicators are evidence that these birth pains has been increasing, and very soon, birth will be given to our redemption. So where are we now? That's the topic of our next segment. In this section, I want to talk to you about the delay and Yeshua's literal fulfillment of Matthew 25. The Feast of Trumpets officially ended on October the 1st at 6.35 p.m. Jerusalem time. Now, we were waiting with much anticipation for the revelation of our redemption, as I'm sure you were too. When you look in Matthew 25, a similar scenario plays out with the ten virgins all waiting for the bridegroom to arrive. Now, who's telling the parable? Yeshua. So, Jesus is saying, you'll expect me and all of you will be waiting. But I will come with a delay, and at that time of the delay, some of you will go in and some will not be ready. So let's briefly listen as Yeshua tells the parable of the ten virgins. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, 
They all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So as you've heard, there was a delay prior to the arrival of the bridegroom. All these virgins expected him at a certain time. And they all were most likely awake at that time, you know, that they expected him. But the parable says they fell asleep while the bridegroom delayed to arrive. Now to state the obvious, I think we all agree there was a delay. And the five wise virgins knew to make preparations just in case he would be delayed. What did they do? Well, they took extra oil. What does that mean to us waiting for our bridegroom right now? The extra oil simply means they equipped themselves in case they had to wait a little while longer. And for us it simply means we have to recognize there will be a delay, it is expected. And even Jesus himself made this delay known to us. So what's the equivalent of filling our lamps with extra oil? Well, most biblical scholars agree the oil refers to the Holy Spirit. And I believe it means we should stay in the Spirit during this delay. In other words, don't go about your normal business during this delay period. I'm not saying don't go to work. I'm saying watch and wait and stay focused on Jesus in this time. But how long will this delay be? A few days? A week? A month? Or perhaps a year? When you take scripture literally, it says the bridegroom eventually came at midnight that same day. So clearly this delay was not that long, but how long can the bride expect to wait? The short answer is not long. As to the time, let's consider the following. First of all, Jonah was a messenger of doom, just like how you know judgment is coming upon the earth. Now he's, well, he was a messenger of doom to the city of Nineveh, but on his way there, he was delayed for three days while being in the belly of the fish Jesus after he was crucified, went down you know, to the grave to Hades for three days. And he preached, the Bible says, uh, to those uh, souls that died before his crucifixion. And then after the third day, he resurrected those souls and they went up to heaven with him. But he was the first fruits of the dead, the Bible says. Now these are just two scriptures I've highlighted and again it is entirely my hypothesis but what if the rapture event has a delay of three days? You know this might very well be the case. I don't know. We'll see. That would mean Yeshua is literally fulfilling Matthew 25 as we've heard earlier. That would also mean many that were watching then during the expected time will be going about their normal business unaware that the bridegroom could come literally three days later to resurrect the dead and gather the believers unto himself. Now this may or may not be the case, but please consider this, when a woman is pregnant uh, and is in pain to deliver the baby, do you think she can hold off of giving birth to that child another week or month or even a year? I'm sure you ladies would agree absolutely not. In this section, I want to very briefly talk to you about Revelation 12 and the birth of the morning star. Revelation 12 one says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. Again, this woman is pregnant, you know, she's about to give birth, and we are right at that threshold. We saw the sign on the 29th of this woman that is about to give birth. Remember the town conception in Chile? And remember Christ Church in New Zealand? Well, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, has been conceived and God is about to give birth to our redemption. So let's see what happens three days from the end of the Feast of Trumpets on the 1st of October and let's see what happens on October the 4th of this year 2011 which is three days exactly from the end of the festival. Now I may be wrong about this but man if I'm right you want to pay close attention to the following events appearing in the heavens. 
The program I'm using is called Stellarium and it's free to download. Just Google it and you can have a look at this yourself. But let me show you what happens three days from the end of the Feast of Trumpets. And again, I want to give all our watchers credit that contributed to this info. If I came across this or looked at this more closely earlier, you guys would have heard it by now. But here's what happens in the heavens three days from the end of the Feast of Trumpets. Okay guys, so uh, at the moment we're on the 30th of September as you can see here, Saturn and Venus are both in the womb of the woman. If I can just switch this uh, graphic on there, you can see there. They're sitting right here in the womb. And if you run this forward, one, two, three, four. On the fourth day or three days after the feast, we can see that Venus gets born. And Venus, if you can go to research on this, is known as the brighter morning star. Jesus calls himself the brighter morning star in Revelation 22. And on this day, exactly three days um, after the festival, we see Venus exiting the womb of Virgo. Uh, it just so happens that Saturn on the 11th of the 11th, 2011, also comes out of the womb. And those Saturn years referring, um, you know, to Satan, which uh, stood before the woman with child, ready to devour the child as soon as it was born. So could this be an indication that our Messiah which, you know, he's three days late, or will be three days late. Could this possibly be, and again, I stress the word possibility, could this possibly be uh, the birth of our redemption on this day, the 4th of um, October? And I wanted to leave that thought with you, uh, which I think is very well worth considering. Uh, you have to understand this sign here, uh, with, you know, with this woman, if you go back on the 29th, you can see the moon's at her feet, she's clothed with the sun, you know, Venus and, and Saturn sitting in the womb there. And this basically, you, you, if you've heard about the Hopi prophecy, it's referring here to the, you know, the Blue Star and the Red Star Kachina. Uh, this is also referring basically, what, what this means is, uh, you know, together with our redemption, judgment is coming on the earth. So first Christ is coming, he's taking his bride away. And then on the 11th of the 11th, uh, 2011, Saturn is born. Uh, and I really believe that this is a time of great judgment that is officially starting on the earth. By then, you know, um, we will be taken out. It just happens on the 8th and the 9th of uh, November. You know, FEMA has an emergency broadcasting uh, a test going on at that time. Could it be that during that time, you know, terrible things had, would have taken place by then? Uh, you know, possibly the rapture, most likely the rapture. Uh, and they've very uh, conveniently left open two days uh, you know, possibly for the Antichrist to make his first global address on those two days. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking why else would they open up two days on major broadcasting stations, or, or rather all the broadcasting stations as far as I've heard, uh, in the U.S. during those two days, critical days on the 8th and the 9th. You also have an asteroid on the 8th and the 9th crossing Earth in very close proximity uh, during those two days. Um, you know, so there's terrible things coming on the Earth, people, but I found this very interesting. Uh, after the festival and you can see here clearly you know that Venus is out of the womb here so could we see an rapture event taking place on this day you know this is you know three days after the actual event that that has been expected we all been waiting and I really believe that this is <laughs> this is very likely I mean how long can you be pregnant for and this woman is pregnant and you can see here that clearly Venus is being born um, three days after the festival um, I wanted to make this video just to let you guys know to be watching I believe that date could potentially be a most interesting one to watch and one that is certainly worthy of the attention of every believer waiting on this blessed hope. Now this video has been a short and sweet update to simply tell you my brothers and sisters in Christ it ain't over till the fat trumpet blows. My precious sister in Christ Jeanette Soto said it perfectly when she said being delayed does not mean the trip has been cancelled. So now more than ever, you guys really need to watch. And I'm very serious when I say this. This is a time where I call, you know, the red zone. You know, this is the rapture red zone. And this is the time when a lot, a lot of people is going to be caught out not watching. Why? Because they expected him. He's delayed. They fell asleep. They ran out of oil. This is the time you need to watch. You know, how long can this woman keep this baby inside a womb? You know, Jesus, our redemption is about to be born and we need to keep our eyes focused. We need to be looking upwards because our redemption is indeed drawing nigh. In this section, I want to talk to you about how to get saved now and some tribulation no-nos. Now, again, this has been a very short and sweet video and I just merely intend, intended this for, for this to be an update, uh, not an in-depth study. 
But I want to talk to those people out there that don't know Jesus Christ yet. Friend, I don't know who you are or what your beliefs are, but I want to tell you Jesus Christ is really the only way to heaven. After the rapture event, many people will die. In fact, the Bible says a total of two-thirds of the earth's population will die during this horrible time to come. That's more than four billion people that will die. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're going to be on the receiving end of God's wrath. And believe me, you don't want to be part of that crowd. Since the beginning of creation, God has mapped out His redemption plan for mankind in the heavens. And He sent His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to be the sacrifice that would pay the penalty of sin on behalf of all mankind. Jesus offers you salvation free of charge and all you have to do to be saved and escape what is to come is to accept Him and His offer. Now, if you want to make that decision today, let me invite you to say a simple prayer with me. Simply say, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I repent and confess my sins and ask that you cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe that you have died on the cross of Calvary and that you are the Son of God. Write my name in the book of life today and send your Holy Spirit to dwell inside of me, to guide and teach me in your ways. In Jesus' name, Amen. Friend, if you've said this prayer, please get in touch with me. And remember, watch my video on how to get rapture ready so that you can understand some of the things that Satan's using on believers uh, so that you can be ready and so that you can prepare. And also, please, uh, you know, send me a note. Just let me know that if you said this prayer so I can pray for you. For those that choose to ignore this message, you know, right now, I'd like to give you some advice which may very well save your soul during the tribulation period. During the coming tribulation period, which is seven years long, a world leader known as the Antichrist uh, to Christians will rise and uh, being possessed by Satan himself will cause every human being on the face of this planet to receive a mark of some sort. Revelation 36 gives you some more information about that. But without this mark, which by the way is a physical implant in either your right hand or on your forehead, you will not be able to buy or sell anything. Now if you receive this mark, which will be a digital implant of some sorts, uh, promoted under the false pretenses of security and health benefits, the Bible says you'll doom your soul to hell for all eternity. Go and read Revelation 13 to get some more information on that. Not being able to buy or trade without this mark, you'll potentially starve to death. Now if you choose not to receive the mark and to then accept the saving grace of Jesus Christ afterwards, your faith will undoubtedly be tested even unto death. Those that choose to follow Christ will almost certainly be beheaded, and even this is recorded in Scripture in the book of Revelation. So the price of ignorance now is a very expensive one, and to think the Bible says scoffers are willingly ignorant. Friend, if you've been scoffing and mocking the saving grace of Jesus Christ, you need to repent and ask Jesus to forgive you. Now, I only have two things I want you to remember if you've been left behind after the rapture event. First of all, accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and serve Him with all your heart and mind in faithfulness even unto death. And number two, no matter how alluring, safe, convenient, impressive, or right it appears to take the mark at the time, if you do, you'll end up in hell and that's guaranteed. So do not take the mark. It will be hard and it will be an almost certain death sentence, but if you prevail and endure, your soul will be saved and you'll get to see your Christian loved ones, uh, you know, again, that was taken during the rapture event. You live again with Christ, uh, Jesus, and reign with Him a thousand years, even unto all eternity. Now, I'd rather wish for you to accept Him now than to go through all of this horrible judgments coming onto the earth. But since many will still choose to be ignorant and completely ignore this very deadly warning, I want to just, uh, why don't you just keep these two points in mind and it may very well save your soul. To all my brothers and sisters out there, keep the faith, keep your light burning and keep watching in this red zone we currently in. Because any moment our Savior Jesus Christ will come for us. Remember all the signs are lining up this year. All the signs are pointing that His return is imminent. And like I said, you know, this is a crucial time to be watching. You guys can't let go. You guys can't cool down. You need to stay on your toes. You need to stay watching. And you need to make sure that your lamps are filled with oil. So look up for your redemption draws nigh. Yahweh bless.